Better 45. Yeah. All right, rifle. Pistol. One more. Fantastic. Hey everybody, what's going on? Thanks for swinging by, I sure do appreciate it. If this is your first time with the channel, my name is Mark. Oh, hi Mark. Welcome to Fit and Fire. Let's get into this video. We are talking about a 1911, and I get it, there's all the jokes out there, two world wars, okay boomer, all that type of stuff, but at the end of the day, the 1911 has a very soft spot in my heart because, uh, it was one of the first pistols that I ever remember shooting. My dad was a huge fan of it, so naturally I'm a huge fan of 1911s, and they're just really fun to shoot. Before we get further into the video, my question to you guys, sound off in the comment section down below, is, is the 1911 a viable option in the 21st century? My opinion is yes, absolutely so. We see the advent of the M45 by the Marines. Um, that wasn't necessarily the best showing, but we saw an evolution of the 1911. We see the 2011s from Staccato, the Prodigy from Springfield, which is their double stack 9mm 1911. We have the 2311s. So we're seeing this evolution from a 45 ACP to a 9mm double stack 1911, and I think that, that is going to make it more viable in the 21st century when it's being compared to say any type of polymer frame striker fired pistol that's my thoughts let me know what you think down in the comments in addition to that if you haven't already subscribed to the channel i would greatly appreciate you guys considering doing so any type of interaction with this video whether it be a thumbs up or comment or a share does a lot to cuck the YouTube overlords, as Risky Krisky would say, and also help me expand the channel. So let's dive into it. We are talking about the Ballistic Defense Atom 45. This is a five inch 45 ACP 1911, and it is uh, pretty standard. Now, full disclosure, G-Force Arms did send this to me, and they're not paying me to say anything good, bad, or indifferent. They sent it to me and said, let, let us know what your thoughts. Go shoot it. Go have fun. And if you wouldn't mind, do a video. That's what we're doing. And that's all it is. So I have some things that I like about this. I have some things that I'd like to see improved with this. We'll talk about that in this video. We're also going to talk about magazine compatibility with this and my experience shooting it. So let's dive into a quick overview of this. First and foremost, like I said, this is going to be a five inch 4140 hammer forged steel barrel on uh, that. And then we have a 4140 hammer forged steel slide and frame. So that is, I would say probably the minimum you should expect from a 45 ACP 1911. Has some really nice slide serrations here, a beaded front sight, Novak rear sights, ambidextrous thumb safety here, skeletonized trigger, a really nice beaver tail with memory bump on the grip safety, some nice walnut grip panels here, and a pretty decent trigger. I'm not going to say that it's the best 1911 trigger that I've ever uh, messed with, but here you guys go. Uh, just double check to make sure it's clear. Here we go. And there's a little bit of take up right there. You hit that really crisp wall and there's no creep at all. It's going to break right there. Your reset is like literally one millimeter or less. It's boom, just right there and then break again. There you go. The trigger is a little bit heavy for a 1911, I would say. I would love to see that to be improved by ballistic defense or by G-Force when it gets imported into the United States. Just kind of touch those up a little bit. That would be great. As you can see the B-roll here, this is exactly what I'm getting on my trigger gauge. So take that for what you will. One of the great things about this pistol is that it is very budget friendly, you know, coming in well under $600 in some cases. Um, I have seen other pistols that are very similar to this one from other manufacturers coming in a little bit more uh, inexpensive than this one. But at the end of the day, this is still under $600 and uh, I would say a good entry level 1911. That's kind of where we're going with this.
All right, so let's talk about uh, magazine and holster compatibility. Uh, it comes with one eight round mag. Uh, this is a company called At Mag, and uh, it, it worked just fine. No complaints whatsoever. I actually believe that this is a Metgar uh, magazine that has just been rebranded to another company. Uh, but yeah, no problems. You know, as you can see, it locks back on empty. So there is no problems there. Got the, I got a 10 round magazine here that was donated to the channel by my cameraman Hefe. Really appreciate him. And no problems there. Locks back as well. So, and then I have two of these eight round Metgar mags. And naturally, these are running just fine as well. I ran all four of the magazines that I have for 1911 through the shooting competition and had no problems whatsoever. So let's move on to the holster compatibility. I have a Safari Land level two holster here that I've had for quite some time and it does exactly what you would expect. I used this at the two gun competition and had no concerns, no complaints with it whatsoever. Fits in really, really well. So if you are interested in picking one of these up, and you have a holster already, or you want to get a holster, just a standard government size 1911 holster should do the trick. So there you go. So let's talk about my shooting experience with this pistol. And let me tell you, I've had a lot of fun shooting it. Has it been all, you know, sunshine and uh, tulips and all that type of stuff? No, it hasn't been. There's been some uh, issues with it. Nothing that is glaring enough for me to tell you not to buy this, but I will point out a couple of things here that I would like to see ballistic defense and or G-Force to improve on. Number one, like I've already mentioned, the trigger is just a tad bit heavy, in my opinion. I'd like to see them kind of tweak that just a little bit. Uh, number two is some of the finishing when it comes to this particular pistol is just, um, I guess what you would expect for a budget-minded pistol. Right here on the takedown level, uh, you're gonna see some uh, pitting in that. It's probably a mem part, but even still, um, this inexpensive part, I would say, is um, got some imperfections in it, and my eyes go to it each and every single time. Now, for me, as a reviewer, that's not that big of a thing. For you who is looking to buy your first 1911 or have something that's a conversational piece, something that you wanna keep, maybe pass down to your kids or something like that, um, those are kind of the things that really irk me. I would like to see them kind of brush up on their QAQC there. The next thing is, while I was shooting this in the two-gun match, uh, I'm going to show a clip of me shooting this and it's extremely embarrassing. Uh, there is a part where we had to shoot a Texas star and shoot some steel and um, I just, I was, I was not shooting good, not shooting good at all. Uh, I was expecting to be a little bit better than I was, especially at that stage and especially since I was using a 1911. But for whatever reason, I could not hit the steel to save my life. Now, question is, is that the Indian or the arrow? And to be frankly honest with you, I think it's a little bit of both. And here's the reason why. Number one, I change from one pistol to another each and every single week. In that particular two gun match, I was actually shooting two different um, setups. So I had two different entries. I was shooting the 1911 and then I was shooting a uh, PDP and a, uh, um, a FN 509. So I was jumping in every stage, Shit. jumping back and forth between two pistols. Yeah. So there could have been uh, some of my own issues there. I'm going to put that out there 100%. But the other thing that I found is that this rear Novak sight is now moving back and forth. I'll get a close up so you guys can see this. Naturally, the way that you fix that is you just, you know, tighten it down and um, you're, you should be good to go. But the problem is, this is not the first time that this has happened. After the first 100 rounds, um, I noticed that it was wiggling back and forth. Um, actually, to be honest with you, my cameraman, Hefe, he saw that it was work wiggling back and forth. So he tightened it down for me. Took it back out to the range, shot it again, and uh, kind of forgot about that. 
took it to the two gun and now after the two gun, I noticed that it is wiggling again. So I would like to see ballistic defense and G-Force pay a little bit more attention to that. Make sure that these are locked down uh, to spec and make sure that they're, you know, double checking these things as well. So a couple things that I'd like to see improved on this um, just a little bit. What has been my experience with this uh, shooting it at the range, shooting at two gun competition. I've got approaching 500 rounds. I'm not exactly sure where I'm at on the round count because uh, uh, to be honest with you, I didn't keep track of how much I shot at the two gun match, but uh, approaching 500 rounds. And I will say that I have had almost zero issues. Now, I did have one stovepipe on this, and I believe that that is my fault. Got a lot of hate in my other 1911 videos about how I just take it out of the box and take it to the reins and shoot it, and you can't do that. You gotta, you gotta break, break it all the way down. You gotta clean it and oil it and da 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 da. Well, to appease you guys, I went ahead and did that. I broke this all the way down as soon as I got it, and I cleaned it, put it back together, took it out to the range, and I forgot to drop a couple of extra drops of oil. Onto, <laughs> onto this, and within the first 100 rounds, I had one stovepipe. That's it, one. Ever since then, uh, I have ensured that it has gotten some uh, additional oil every time I've shot it, and no problems, no problems whatsoever. Especially at that two-gun match, I was expecting to have at least one issue, and no, not at all. So, uh, really, really good um, reliability on this, um, but running, 45 ACP in a 1911. If you've done it right, there shouldn't be any issues. Some of the other things that I really do like about this is the fact that uh, your gun case that it comes in comes with everything that you need. It comes with uh, cleaning brushes, it comes with um, a bushing tool, um, and it comes with um, some brushes as well. So um, I really do like that they took the time to add those components. But to be frankly honest with you, I would rather them save the money on those pieces and add that to the manufacturing uh, cost of this and kind of do a little extra things like uh, polish up that trigger a little bit, uh, make sure that the rear Novak sight is good, make sure that the um, all the different components are looking good as well. There you have it. There is the Atom 45 from Ballistic Defense. Uh, I'd say is a pretty nice entry level 1911, especially in 45 ACP. Uh, maybe in the future I can get a nine millimeter and see how well that's going to run. But at the end of the day, I had a lot of fun shooting this. Uh, would I recommend to you guys for entry level? I would say, yeah, uh, you know, coming in under $600, I think you're going to uh, do well with this. And if you like to tinker, you can polish uh, a lot of the internal components up to make it even better. So definitely a great starter 1911 for you guys, but I leave it to you. Let me know what you guys think down in the comment section down below. With all that being said, we're going to go ahead and get out of here. Thank you so very much for swinging by and checking this video out. I really do appreciate everybody's likes, comments, and shares. That's big. If you guys are interested in financially supporting the channel, there's a way to do so by becoming a member. I've got a lot of different things going on with that to include behind the scenes videos of everything that's going on moving forward. So if you guys are interested to see what types of things I'm doing at the range or the new things that are coming into the channel, you can catch some of those videos through the membership. So with that being said, we'll go ahead and get out of here. As always, freedom through strength. Here comes a high five. Catch you guys later. Bye, y'all.